guys, it's Haley from The Modern Ferret, and today I am sharing the top 10 mistakes ferret owners make so you can avoid them. I've put a lot of information in here, so feel free to take notes, and make sure to check the description for links I referenced throughout. The first mistake I see a lot of new ferret owners make is doing the wrong research or no research at all before they buy a ferret. What I mean is they don't take the time to learn about this animal that they will likely have for the next five to nine years of their life. Maybe all they do is look at that little pamphlet from the pet store with just a couple bullet points on it. They don't take the time to watch a bunch of videos on YouTube like this one to see what it's really like to have ferrets. They don't reach out to current ferret owners to pick their brains. And then when something gets tough, like their baby ferret starts biting and they have no idea what to do, or their ferret starts developing something called adrenal disease, they give up. These types of impulse buys lead to a lot of ferrets ending up in shelters. I made a Ferrets 101 video that goes over a lot of ferret basics you really should know before buying or adopting one, so I'd recommend watching that video linked in the description below. I will also link to the books I go to for solid information on ferrets as well. The second mistake I see a lot of new ferret owners make is that because they don't do their research beforehand, they end up buying the wrong supplies. This looks like a cage that is way too small, treats and food that contain unhealthy ingredients that are hard on your ferret's digestive tract, as well as buying unsafe toys. Unfortunately, sometimes the information provided at a pet store is not always accurate, so it's important to look elsewhere for ferret supply recommendations. There's some great online groups out there as well as other social media pages. I recommend talking with actual ferret owners to hear about their experiences. I have a video I made on my favorite ferret product recommendations, so I will make sure to link in the description below. I also have a pretty in-depth video outlining the minimum size requirements for a ferret cage, as well as comparing the most popular ferret cages out there, so feel free to check that out. Lastly, there's links in the description I provided that will help educate you on the basics when it comes to ferret nutrition, so you can make a more informed decision about the food and treats you choose to give your ferret. Learning about ferret nutrition is sort of a rabbit hole, no pun intended. I also provide a link to a list of safe versus unsafe ferret toys, so make sure to check that out as well. The third mistake I wanna mention has to do with you, the owner. Are you really ready for a ferret? Or are you maybe the wrong owner, at least right now? In my experience, the wrong owner could look like a very young child begging for a ferret as a first pet. Then a parent will most likely end up being the primary owner. Do you as a parent really have time for that? Or another wrong owner might be a full-time student with a part-time job on top of that and maybe a lot of family obligations too, and almost no time to spend with their new pet. Ferrets require a lot of time. They are super social and are looking for someone that wants to hang out a lot. The fourth mistake I see, I'm calling picking the wrong ferret. What I mean is a lot of people assume the only place to buy a ferret is at a major big brand pet store and that the only age ferret you should get is a baby. But maybe a baby ferret is not right for you. Maybe a calmer adult ferret is better for your stage in life. There are likely shelters nearby that you can look into, as well as ferrets that need to be rehomed that you can find on various websites or social media. Of course, be very careful with these types of things, but you may be able to really help a ferret in a bad situation find a better home. And though it's harder to find, there are also reputable breeders around the country too. My point is, Big pet stores are not the only place to get ferrets, and perhaps not the best place either. I'll link to some resources in the description below. The next mistake I see a lot is actually something that could cost your ferret their life. But before I get into that, if you're new to my channel, my name is Haley, and I post entertaining and educational videos about ferrets. So now is a perfect time to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Next, I wanna talk about how people set up the wrong environment for their ferret. Many ferret owners free roam their ferrets, like I do, and so that means they are likely to get into quite a bit of trouble in your home if you let them. There are a lot of dangerous things lurking around that you may not even be aware of, 
I did a really in-depth video on how to ferret proof your entire house room by room, which I would really encourage you to watch. It's linked below. Another thing to keep in mind with the environment is the temperature. According to Ferrets for Dummies, ferrets should not be in spaces that are hotter than 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or even less if it's humid. This means on hot summer days, you're going to need to remember to leave the air conditioning on at home while you go to work or school. The next mistake I often see is people implementing the wrong routine with their ferret or having no routine at all. Like humans, pets in general appreciate a routine they can count on. Though it's important to add novelty and excitement to your ferret's life through new enrichment items or maybe a surprise trip to the park, there are certain aspects of pet care that serve you and your pet better on a schedule or a routine. Try to clean your ferret's cage on a regular, consistent basis. Feed them at the same time every day. Change their potty pads and litter box often. According to Ferrets for Dummies, ferrets sleep 15 to 18 hours per day. So that means they are up and ready to play six to nine hours per day. Make a point to play with them for extended periods of time consistently every single day. And you should also set aside time to update their playrooms or designated areas for playtime when you're away. My point is, set a routine to be a reliable, present pet owner. I actually made an example daily ferret routine video that you'd probably find pretty helpful, so make sure to check that out, linked in the description below. Next up is vet care. A lot of people choose the wrong vet or no vet at all until it's too late. What does the wrong vet look like? You'd be surprised how many vets are not comfortable seeing ferrets or they're not up to date on the latest ferret care. And something to keep in mind is your ferret is going to need vaccines and regular checkups throughout the year. This means you can't just look for one when an emergency arises. The biggest thing you can do is call around and ask local vets how much experience they have treating ferrets. And if they don't have any, ask for recommendations in your area. I plan to do a much more in-depth video on selecting a great ferret vet, so when I do, I will make sure to link to that in the description below. My general advice is to find not only a good ferret vet, but a backup just in case. Then, as I have learned more than once, also find an emergency 24-hour vet that is willing to see ferrets. That way, when you need to take your ferret for an emergency x-ray for a possible impaction at 2.30 in the morning, been there, done that, you know where to go and you don't have to waste any precious time Googling. This leads me to number eight. A lot of new ferret owners have the wrong budget in mind when it comes to what this pet will cost. Ferrets are surprisingly expensive. I've paid over $500 in ferret cages alone. Their food is expensive, especially if you try to feed them a more species appropriate diet. And also their vet care is no joke. I've paid over $160 for surprise vet visits for Moose when he was acting funny. I paid almost $600 when Moose needed to have the tip of his tail amputated. I paid $116 to test a tumor on Newt's neck, only to find out it wasn't cancer, just fat. All three of my ferrets ended up needing Deslorelin implants for their adrenal disease, which costs around $200 per year per ferret. This is not even including the regular vaccines and checkup appointments. Ferrets are seriously expensive. I'd like to do a video soon that dives really deep into what ferrets actually cost. And when I do, I will make sure to link that below. Sadly, ferrets are prone to a lot of health problems and so the costs do really add up. Check out my personal experience with three sick ferrets at once in the description below. It was a lot to handle. Next up is training. A lot of people are doing the wrong training when it comes to ferrets. They don't know how to potty train them. They don't know how to stop them from nipping and biting. And also they don't realize how many fun behaviors they can actually teach their ferrets. From what I found, if people don't bond with and train their ferrets properly, they tend to keep them locked in their cage for longer periods of time. This can be really detrimental to your ferret's health. And it's probably also not why you got a ferret in the first place. Please check out my potty training video link below, as well as my resources on bite training. The better trained your ferret is, the more you will probably enjoy spending time with them. Also, if I can just give a quick shout out to my friend, The Trained Ferret on YouTube. Her training videos are incredible and she's got a lot of really great tips, so make sure to check her out. Last but not least is number 10. 
A lot of new ferret owners or people thinking about getting a ferret have the wrong assumptions. One community member put it really well. She said, people assume that because ferrets are small, they require less care and commitment than a dog or a cat. Small does not equal easy. Ferrets are more work than you think. Their upkeep is a serious commitment. Like I mentioned before, their required vet care is regular and at times expensive. They are prone to getting sick and getting hurt, which is hard on your wallet and on your heart. They are smarter than most people realize, which means they require more enrichment and mental stimulation than you may be prepared to give. A super common misconception people have is that ferrets are rodents, which is something worth clearing up before they ever bring one home. This mistake could lead to a lot of people buying the wrong food, cage, and enrichment items. Another common misconception is that ferrets should spend most of their time inside a cage. The truth is that many ferret owners like me free roam their ferrets, but you have to know how to do it right so they don't get hurt. This is another topic I'd like to cover at some point. Another thing I feel obligated to mention when it comes to wrong assumptions is that ferrets poop a lot. They aren't rodents, so they don't have these little like small orderly poops. They have like little dog poops everywhere. I think this whole video could be summed up with one simple point. In order to avoid these 10 common mistakes, you need to do your research before committing to caring for this pet for the next five to nine years of your life. Talk to people who've owned ferrets for a long time. Call a shelter owner. And if you already have a ferret and you've made or are making some of these mistakes, be gentle with yourself and understand that we all started somewhere. If you guys have more you'd like to add to this list, please leave a comment below. Also, I would love to hear your suggestions on what topics you'd like me to cover next. Thank you so much for watching, and if this was Weasley, the best thing you've seen all day, make sure to like and subscribe. Bye! Okay, bye bye! Or just like. That's fine too. Okay. It's like, here's my pet Eli, and then a mysterious hand is like. <laughs> <laughs> so what's happening? There's a lot of work that goes into carrot. <laughs> Do you want me to take it back? Yeah. There's a lot of work that goes into carrots. Yes, good.